Alright, welcome back to another episode of Carolina Kayak Adventures. This episode is going to be all about how we catch flounder. We're not trying to be any kind of experts or whatever, but we do catch a lot of flounder. And what we want to do here today is we want to show you the techniques that we use. We want to show you the bait that we're using. We want to show you what kind of water we're looking for. Um, all the little things that we do to, to catch the flounder that we catch, we want to share that with you. So stay tuned and, and uh, take a good look. Get a pad and paper out, take some good notes, and I uh, hope it's helped you guys. That one? Sweet. Pull the net. Nice flounder. Oh, I wish I have a net. Dude, it's a nice flounder. Oh, look at this flounder. Oh. Flounder, 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 ice flounder. Okay, let's take a good look at the flounder. They lay on the bottom, they burrow down into little holes and crevices, and they've got both eyes looking up, looking for the bait that's going to be passing by. And they've got a huge mouth, which is going to allow them to bite a really good sized bait fish. Now, our favorite choice for artificial is to use a blue water candy jig head. Typically, we use about a 3 16 ounce jig head and a gulp ripple mullet. It is hard to beat the gulp ripple mullet. Um, gulp has that great smell. They feel like real fish when the fish bites it so they're a lot less likely to let go before you have a chance to set the hook. The reason I like to use this size jig head is it gives me good casting distance and it helps me keep the bait close to the bottom. You can find these baits at almost any tackle shop that you go to and um, anywhere that carries gulp. Walmart's got it bunch of different places so look for this package right here all right let's talk just a second about the current whether it's being driven by wind or tidal flow whatever make sure that you're facing the current so you're casting toward the current and then you're bringing your bait fish back with the current it's important that you're doing that because the flounder are going to be facing that direction waiting for the fish that are getting pushed by that tidal flow now take a look at the retrieve all I'm doing are little twitches those little twitches will bring the bait up off the bottom and then I reel the slack out and bounce it again. It's really that simple. And then you can vary your speed just a little bit. If you're not getting a bite, slow down. One last thing I wanted to point out to you in this little chart is the variation on the bottom. Flounder will sit inside of a little hole or even just on the back side of a sandbar or even just a small bump that's on the bottom. All they need is something to blend in with really and then as the tidal flow or the current is pushing the bait they're sitting in perfect position to shoot up off the bottom and to hit that bait. Okay let's talk big picture of where I'm looking to find the flounder. What I'm looking for for one are, are kind of like choke points. I'm looking for creeks that dump into other creeks or I'm looking for a place that has a channel that's got structure nearby like docks or oyster beds. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to position myself where I can cast up current, bring that bait back down the current, and I'm going to start in a shallow area and retrieve it in a shallow and then go a little bit deeper and retrieve again and keep going a little bit deeper until I find a fish. And then whatever depth I find that fish in, I'll continue to fish there and it's more than likely you'll find other fish there. It's funny, flounder school up um, and a lot of times the smaller ones will bite first. They're a little bit more aggressive. So keep fishing that certain depth. Here's another good example of an area where you've got smaller creeks feeding into larger channels. And also you, you can, you'll notice the dark areas where there are deeper holes. Man, that's a great spot to be looking for a flounder. Let's talk hook set for just a second. Listen, it's really simple. What's going to happen if you're doing the technique that we talked about where you're doing little bumps and, and retrieving your line, just reeling the slack out of your line. 
bump, bump, oh, reel the slack out of your line. What's going to happen is as you go to do one of your bumps, you're going to feel weight on like the line. Fish. When you feel that weight, reel the, whatever slack you have in the line out and then set the hook. And you don't have to do this great big massive, like, you know, bass fishing hook set. It's, it's, it's just a small little jerk and you set the hook. If, if you miss, wait a second. Just wait one second because he hasn't gone anywhere. If he missed, he wants that thing. I'm telling you, he's aggressive. Do another couple bumps. He may chase it all the way to the boat. And the last good tip for you to remember is fish, fish your bait all the way to your kayak. I cannot tell you how many times I've actually caught a fish right underneath my kayak and I'm sitting in two feet of water. All right, I hope this really helped you guys. If you like this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out our, our uh, website. Hit us up on Facebook. And as always, God bless you.